While tipping has long been a staple of the hospitality industry as a reward for good service, its extension into less labor-intensive services raises questions. Me and all the Brooklyn girlies in our class guilt paying 25% tip for a freaking donut. But look what I found that was going way too far. I am not doing this. I'm trying to book a hotel on a website. And they're asking for a tip? Who? Who's the tip going to? The computer? The website? The programmer? Tipping is often defined as voluntarily giving extra money for a service or a job done well. But tipping practices may be getting out of control. Not every service necessarily warrants a tip. When I tell you there is nothing more awkward than hitting no tip on that little iPad they have, like whip it out. I had to get this soda and it was like tip, no tip. And I was like, this is so awkward. But like, if you were handcrafting the soda, okay. While tipping is deeply ingrained in many industries and has the potential to incentivize good service, there are valid reasons to question the practice in certain situations. Traditionally, consumers have taken pride in being good tippers at places like restaurants and hotels, which typically pay their workers lower than the minimum wage in expectation they'll make up the difference in tips. Here is tonight's episode of how much I made waitressing at a supper club in Wisconsin. It was a Friday night and it is Lent still, so it is a Friday night fish fry, so it's a little busier than a normal Friday night um, because of Lent, but let's count and see what I made tonight. Okay, as always, there are piles of 100, so here's 100, 200, 300 with a lot of ones. I think this was 12. Eight. $308. And I was there for reference from 5 o'clock. Well, I was late girl and I closed. I got home. I left at 10 30. So five and a half hours for 308 bucks. Not bad. Academics who study the topic say many consumers are now feeling irritated by automatic tip requests everywhere. While nobody wants to seem stingy, the solution might lie in a collective reevaluation of what services truly warrant a tip. Some establishments automatically include a service charge in your bill. In such cases, tipping may not be necessary, but you can still choose to tip extra if you believe it's warranted. If you can't afford to tip, don't go out to eat. This is coming from someone who's been a cook, a server, and a dishwasher, and is currently doing DoorDash. This is the message. Please do not tip unless you feel that you wanted to show appreciation for the great service. She's assuming that people can't tip because they can't afford it, when in reality, they might just not want to tip you. To be honest, I don't even think we should tip servers. I think we should tip the cooks, but apparently that's just me. Here's my DoorDash story. I picked up this lady's groceries at Walmart in the rain, drove 45 minutes to a nice ass gated community where I took the groceries out by myself and brought them to the door and I got paid $2.50 for it. That's not even enough to pay back what I used in gas. And it was about an hour and 30 minutes of my time. I didn't complain, I smiled, said thank you and have a wonderful day. This morning I woke up to a $10 tip that was added to that order. The message is never expect a tip and appreciate if you get one. Tipping is supposed to be based on the quality of service you receive. If the service is exceptional, a higher tip may be warranted. Conversely, if the service is subpar or you experience rude behavior, you may choose to tip less or not at all. You might want to do it out of generosity, but you don't have to, although you know other people think you should. And there are situations where failing to do it will come off as rude, even aggressive. Ultimately, the decision to tip should be based on your assessment of the service provided and your comfort with the practice keeping in mind the local customs and expectations.